Tonight, our special transmission as a report shows several Arab states are fueling Israel's war on Palestine. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Zahra Sayed. Today is the 167th day since Israel started bombing Palestinians indiscriminately. Israeli forces have targeted a residential building in northwest Gaza on Friday morning. The attack has killed 10 Palestinians. The military has targeted residential homes in Rafah and Khan Yunus, resulting in the deaths of 11 civilians. Amongst the casualties are three children and three women. Another operation in the Nasser neighborhood in Rafah has killed eight Palestinians. Media reports show a prolonged siege on Al-Shifa Hospital. Hundreds of displaced Palestinians and patients have been ordered to evacuate the hospital. The Israeli military says it has killed 150 Hamas fighters near the hospital. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has arrived in Tel Aviv for ceasefire discussions. Mossad chief is set to meet counterparts in Qatar to discuss a potential agreement with Hamas. Israeli forces have prevented hundreds of Muslim worshippers from entering the Al-Aqsa Mosque for Friday prayers. Witnesses say there was a heavy military presence in the vicinity of the Kalandia, Zaytun, and the Bethlehem checkpoints leading to the mosque. The death toll from Israel's war continues to mount. At the time of writing, at least 31,988 Palestinians have been killed. Another 8,000 are presumed dead under the rubble. 74,188 have been wounded. Israel's revised death toll from Hamas' attacks stands at 1,139. The United Nations Security Council has failed to pass a U.S. draft resolution urging for a ceasefire in Gaza. This resolution garnered 11 votes in favor, with three against, from Russia, China and Algeria, and one abstention from Guyana. The resolution did not demand an immediate halt to hostilities. The draft resolution was presented today. It received strong criticism from Russia and China, both of whom exercised their veto power against it. Moscow accuses the U.S. of engaging in what it calls a hypocritical spectacle that fails to pressure Israel. On the other hand, China's representative Zhang Jun criticizes the resolution for avoiding the core issue of a ceasefire through ambiguous language. The U.S. draft resolution called for an immediate and sustained ceasefire and tied it to a truce deal involving the release of Israeli captives in Gaza. However, critics noted that the draft fell short of demanding an end to the conflict, unlike previous resolutions that were vetoed by Washington. Following the vote, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Linda Thomas-Greenfield criticized Russia and China for prioritizing politics over progress. She accused them of hindering peace efforts. This resolution is the latest in a series of failed attempts to secure a ceasefire through the Security Council. A report by Oil Change International shows several countries, including Arab states, are providing fuel to support Israel's offensive on Gaza. Oil Change International is a research and advocacy organization focused on exposing the true costs of fossil fuels around the world. The U.S. emerges as the largest supplier of jet fuel to Israel's military. Countries like Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan are implicated in providing crude oil. The assumed pipeline passing through Saudi Arabia and the UAE contributes to Israel's fuel imports. The pipeline is a joint venture of companies from Egypt, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait and Qatar. Russia and Brazil are also mentioned in the report for their fuel contributions. Brazilian crude oil worth 260,000 tons has been delivered to Israel since December. Activists are demanding governments and companies halt fuel shipments to Israel to end human rights abuses in Gaza. Oil Change International says nations and companies should be held accountable for perpetuating conflict. It is calling for an immediate ceasefire and end to the Israeli occupation. Canada will not revoke current permits for military exports to Israel, but will halt future sales. Foreign Minister Melanie Jolie clarified that the recent parliamentary motion only affects future export permits. The motion was initiated by the New Democratic Party and was amended by the Liberals significantly. The revised version dropped calls for Canada, recognizing the Palestinian state. 
Canada has temporarily suspended export permits to Israel since January 8th. Canada has approved over $28.5 million in military export permits during the initial two months of the Gaza War. Recent reports have revealed disturbing accounts of mistreatment and assault suffered by female Palestinian detainees in Israeli detention centers. The Commission for Prisoners and Ex-Prisoners Affairs, along with the Palestinian Prisoner Society, reports that these women endure harsh conditions. They are humiliated daily and face degrading strip searches. One anonymous detainee says she was bound, blindfolded, and physically assaulted by soldiers. Most of these violations have taken place in facilities like the Hasharon cells and the Damon Detention Center. The conditions in the Damon Detention Center are believed to be particularly severe. Currently, 67 female detainees are being held in Israel. These detainees include a mother and her two daughters from Gaza. Most of them are held without formal charges under administrative detention. Israel says that these detentions are necessary to ensure safety. However, human rights groups argue Israeli forces are denying due process and perpetuating indefinite detention without transparency. Palestinian football players and officials are calling on FIFA to disallow Israel's football team to participate in tournaments. They are expressing concern at FIFA's silence. They say FIFA's current stance is very different from their response to the Russia-Ukraine war. The news comes as Israel prepares to play Iceland in the Euro 2024 qualifiers in Budapest. Iceland's coach says he fears refusal to play against Israel may lead to consequences. Palestinian footballers face barriers in joining the national team due to Israeli restrictions. Many Israeli clubs operate in occupied territories. Players are mourning lost teammates and destroyed clubs. They are urging FIFA to act against Israel's impunity and calling for equal treatment in international football. So far, FIFA has not responded to these requests. The Supreme Court of Canada has declined to hear the appeal of a private school related to discriminating against two Muslim students. Calgary's Weber Academy was fined $26,000 for denying prayer space on campus to students. In 2011, the school prohibited the students from praying on campus unless they refrained from visible acts of prayer or prayed off campus. The school argues that providing prayer space comprises the school's secular environment. However, the court upheld the Alberta Human Rights Commission's decision, which sets a precedent for religious accommodation in educational institutions. Weber's Academy's president has expressed disappointment on the decision. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not-for-profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad. Assalamu alaikum.